Okay, so as we push into the Brezhnev turn. Uh, card selected. Russians have selected the Olympic Games again. The U.S. has selected the ABM Treaty. This is kind of a nice choice. They had a number of interesting choices. The Russians didn't feel like they had anything they really wanted to play, and this is fine. ABM Treaty improves DEFCON by a level. Then... They can conduct an operation that says if they can play a four ops card. Well, I just opened up Asia, so I'm going to do a four point coup, and I'm going to drop that in little Pakistan, where I get, well, essentially I'm going to get some value off of it because this is a four. I've dropped a four. I get five, so two go away. And three U.S. influence ends up in Pakistan. And now this is back in place here. It's temporarily gone, but it goes back down because I just blasted a big coup there. For the Olympic Games, well, if I boycott, DEFCON goes up one level, or goes down one level, and that gives a four-point card to the Russians. I don't think I want them to have a four-point card, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Olympic Games with them. We each roll a die. The sponsor gets plus two to the red die roll, and he can get two victory points if he wins. We reroll ties. Well, he got his six, so he gets his two victory points. Uh, that four-point card sounded like more of a pain to allow them at this point particular because I have the Asia scoring card in my hand and I'm planning on racking it up big time there. In fact, I'm not going to be able to get those, but <laughs> at the very least I get the dominance value and that seems exciting to me. All right, so we go into the regular play of the turn now. Kind of big action, so I'll take them um, into play. The Russians threw OPEC rather than taking advantage of that, which would have uh, given them some small amount of victory points, like one. Uh, they did it to coup Argentina, and that wasn't terribly successful, but at least it got them their military requirement. For the U.S., they played their Asia scoring, and they gained a net of about six points in swing there. Um, the dominance versus presence is four, is even five, six. So that's a pretty good score for that. And we can see the U.S. is now kind of regaining uh, quite a bit. And they're in a very strong position as well. Uh, strong in South America. Strong, stronger in Africa. Stronger in Central America now. Stronger in the Middle East. They obviously have this in the Southeast Asia lockdown. And Europe. Europe is actually a real danger for the Russians. They have to really be careful. They could lose the game all at once there. So, I'm looking at this and thinking the Russians have a really hard time at this point. <laughs> Oop, and I flip these over. They haven't been used yet. All right, so again, going into close uh, situation here. The Soviets play the colonial rear guards. They upgrade their position in Czechoslovakia back to control and increase in Poland. Why Why control in Czechoslovakia? Why is that so important? Well, it gives me an opening to areas that I wouldn't otherwise get, and I didn't go into Romania. And this is why I'm in Czechoslovakia. I didn't go into Romania because there's a card for Romania. I go into Czechoslovakia, it gets me reach for Hungary. Uh, how valuable is all that? I don't know. Not terribly, but it does serve some purpose. And it, it kind of, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, increasing in Poland, I, I couldn't take control of Poland, so that, I, taking control of a territory seems more important. It locks you in better. I like taking control of things. But then for the U.S., they play the grain sales to the Soviets, which meant they got to randomly draw a Russian card and choose whether to play it or not. If they didn't like it, they can still play this for the ops points. Well, they liked it, but they liked it for the ops points, so they're stealing the three ops points from the Soviets for that. And you can see the Colonials have increased their position 
in Africa, and they actually also upped their position in Burma. And then the negotiations allowed them to push into Brazil as well. And where did they throw their extra point? Extra point was down in Argentina where the coup was. They're kind of ignoring this European situation, which they can afford to do. Uh, they've got a two-edged route, or uh, they've got two paths to victory right now. And the Russians have to prevent the more dangerous one. Well, meanwhile, the U.S. is spreading throughout the world very, very well. I noticed I forgot to give the U.S. their bonus from the space race. Well, what's happened? Uh, Russians spent a couple points finishing off their control in Poland. That makes them a lot more stabilized to, I'm not going to lose the game right now. But they're still being out-dominated in Europe, as with everywhere on the board. Just threw some points, God knows where. Uh, into France. And you can see they boosted themselves up to a point of power in France. Russia had to get rid of this card. They threw it into space. Uh, otherwise, they would end the game if they play it, or they could hold on to it. Throwing into space, they don't get anything for putting the second man in space, but that's okay. Destalinization here. Oh wow, we just landed on the moon. Uh, this That's what it was used for. And now, the U.S. can throw a card away until the Russians catch up to them every turn. And that's cool, because they had a card, socialist governments, that they kind of want to discard this turn and get it out of their hand. Always kind of a nice option to do that. i got to count my cards. I think I'm probably ahead by one. As we're pushing to the last card of the round, let's see. Uh, Russians played the Truman Doctrine, and it ended up being in effect, removed their influence in Finland. They pumped a point into, I don't know where, into Algeria, I believe, to get themselves back in control there. U.S. played this for two, which... I think they boosted themselves in Finland for control. Russians had to play. Nixon plays the China card. The China card's been uh, pushed out now. And the doctrine should be removed too. They got played for effect. Uh, and the effect of uh, the Nixon was to slip into Italy. Two points to go into an area where they that's controlled by the enemy. You don't like doing this, but they're almost feeling like they have to push uh, Europe into more of a threatened position than it's in. I don't know. It's kind of a waste. They should maybe be working towards Saudi Arabia or whatever. But everything they do is going to be painful at this point. They can't do the cheap coups or uh, destabilization with the uh, realignment table. And then finally the Allies use a one-pointer, and you know, one point to the Russians too, they counter their play. And this doesn't hurt them because it's an Allied card. So now we're on the last Soviet card, and this is not a good one either, but they wanted to hold it. Well, this wouldn't have been too bad earlier. They're going to have two more points. You know, where do you want to go with these points is the problem. I'm just going to push into Jordan. I'm tired of trying to fight for over here. That's not getting me anything. And that gets me close enough to Saudi Arabia that maybe I can get that as well. Uh, that plays the nuclear subs card, though. So the U.S. can coup in battleground companies. doesn't affect the DEFCON for the remainder of the turn. Wow! Well, now... I can't go in Europe, Asia, or the Middle East, but I could coup, and I'm going to use the bear trap for this if I do, say Cuba. Or Algeria. Worthwhile? I don't know. Coups are always kind of nice. Being able to hit battleground states is always nice. Uh, what's unused? This one hasn't shown up yet, and Southeast Asia hasn't shown up yet. I'm good on those. I'd like to get them knocked out of Cuba if I can, but Algeria is an easier coup. This is only a three-point card. I'll be needing a six to do anything there. Let's hit this. Or I could just sort of 
sleaze my way in. Yeah, I'll hit this with a a three. I'm, so I'm at plus three to the die roll, and I need a four to have any effect. I get a five total, which means I drop the Russians by two out of Algeria. And see, what's kind of neat here is they don't even have presence in Africa anymore. And the nuclear subs got played. The bear trap did not. That's the last U.S. card. They can discard this using their space ability. The China card comes into their hand to use. I don't like using it though. And then the turn marker goes forward. And we'll deal out a new hand. For whatever reasons, discards, plays, etc. There's always the possibility, and it happens here, that that new hand, this is eight cards each. There's one more card each due. That whole sucker is going to get reshuffled. I was kind of hoping with the U.S. especially discarding this card that, hey, that we won't hit the end. It looked like there was a decent stack there. I guess you can count and figure that out or whatever. But it looked like there was a decent stack there. Maybe we can make it into the late war without reshuffling all that crap in there. On the other hand, all those scoring cards, I kind of like the idea of getting them out. So, you know, it's kind of a balance. I've thrown some cards that I don't really like. I'll probably be able to take advantage of that for a while. It doesn't look like the Russians are going to be um, going to the moon anytime soon. Okay, as we push into uh, the headline phase, the Russians chose to play one small step. They're tired of having to show their card first, even though they cheated and didn't do so last time. That's what they're going to do. The U.S. says, you know, I'm going to score South America. I have domination. The Russians don't have presence. I get a five point swing off that. I could maybe get another point if I take Chile, but it's not worth it. So, we'll score the Russian. Uh, these guys go here. Uh, the Russians move forward and they're able to score a point for that. They're only able to score it because it's the second space. They wouldn't get to score it if it was this space. But that's too convincing not to do. And for the U.S., well, they get their scoring, and they get five quick points, which is putting this game deeper and deeper into their side of things. It definitely looks like a tough one for the Soviets to pull off a win for. All right. Uh, I guess we move forward with the regular uh, action rounds. we got those in place. All right, let's go. A tug of war type of play going on here. Uh, the Russians play the socialist governments. They reduce two points in West Germany, one in Italy, meaning two of those battleground uh, states are no longer U.S. controlled. The U.S. respond by spending a three-point card, a nice card that they kind of would have liked to have played for the event, but they needed this many points, and they upgrade themselves back into control of those two countries. This is the kind of tennis match type of stuff. I know some people kind of don't like that in 1960. I like it across the board. I like it in this game. I like it in that game. I like the, oh yeah, I'm going to be able to do something, but then my opponent will react by countering it. And I'm just constantly in this position where the Russian move makes the U.S. player think that the Russians maybe had a, an ability to score in Eastern Europe. Now, the truth is the Russians are actually holding... The Southeast Asia card, and there's almost nothing they can do about that sucker. Let's look at the next card. The Russians play this one, which could have given them the China card, but for three points, and they throw that into a coup in Mexico, which is successful. They now have control of Mexico, and they've dropped the DEFCON down to two. That's a problem for the U.S., so they're going to throw the summit in because they don't want to pay the penalty for not taking military action. They're going to throw the summit card in. Now, this allows a number of options here. This is somewhat risky. It could lose the game. Uh, both players are going to roll a die. Each adds one for each region they dominate or control. The Russians control Central America. They dominate it, actually. The U.S. controls South America. Europe is pro-U.S. They have the domination there. So they're up one now. They have Africa, up two. 
Middle East is a tie. Neither side has enough the battleground states for that to matter. Whereas Asia is another US. So the US is gonna net some plus three to the die roll. So it's not a big risk. But if they lose this die roll, the Russians can move the DEFCON marker down to nuke war. It happened in the US player turn. So the US will be at fault for it and will lose the game. With a plus three, I feel like it's worth this risk though. <laughs> Almost. Do not reroll ties. So nobody got the two victory points in the right to um, move the DEFCON marker, which means that was kind of a wasted play by the The next play, both players uh, punted a card that they did not want to see in play into space. The Russians got their gain and no advantage there except they took away the US being able to discard cards. Now these two cards are both going to be discarded because they were played uh, by the enemy invoking the event in addition to the points. Puppet Governments was played to throw two points I think to slip into Burma to start trying to crack into the Southeast Asia. I don't have much hope here but if I can take some of those points away, that's going to be enough points to push the U.S. way up there. And then, uh, and that generated a couple of governments in there in favor of the U.S. And then uh, Comic-Con finally got played here by the U.S. to throw three points in, which they actually slipped into Taiwan. The reason for this is they're preparing for the Korean War. They have it in their hand and they're going to have to play it. They can't punt it anymore. Um, both of these go away. The Comic-Con, well, that increased strength in Poland and East Germany. No biggie there. And then some additional uh, Russian influence in some other Eastern German or East European territories. It's not a big hit for the U.S. They could afford to get rid of that card. And it gets rid of a safe-to-play card for the Russians as well. Struggle goes on to Southeast Asia now. Um, again, event cards played here. For the Russians, they played Camp David Accords. Now that's going to be a permanent little chip for the U.S., which, allow, which prevents the Arab-Israeli event from being playable, the war. Uh, the U.S. got a victory point off this, and you can see they also got some additions. Now in Egypt and Israel, no big deal, but the loss of Jordan that kind of sucks. That now means, well, not a lot really. There wasn't dominance anyway, but there was the Russian possibility of slipping into Saudi Arabia uh, to gain dominance over time. The U.S. played the Korean War and they lost. They had set themselves up so they had two controlling areas next to it. Hey, that would give them only on a six could they lose it, but they managed it anyway. Uh, the USSR, first of all, gets stops. Uh, military operations off of it, but um, they also pulled two victory points which were recorded and they get all the influence that the US had in Korea. Not a huge deal given the cards that are in play right now with Southeast Asia ready to go, but still, it's what we got. And now we're at the end of the line here. Let's follow it down. Uh, first, Salvador Allende. The Russians choose to play him as his event in Chile, rather than the one point which they couldn't really use in Southeast Asia. He's a pretty good event in terms of getting them into South America with a presence. Uh, yeah, a little late, but whatever. Um, at least we can kind of expand from there. The U.S. played a Junta card, putting one into Cuba. Uh, well, actually putting... Uh, yeah, they put points into Cuba and then did uh, realignment rolls on Cuba. And you can see Cuba is no longer controlled by the Russians. They couldn't do coups because the uh, rating's too high, uh, too low, the DEFCON, which means they're going to lose a victory point there. But that's okay because Southeast Asia scoring came up and they took the whole boat, whatever that's worth. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, looks like eight points. They're almost at victory. Fifteen points out of twenty go on and that goes away. 
And then the final thing is the U.S. played their lone gunman card. That means they have to show the Russians what they have, Warsaw Pact formed, that's probably going into space. Um, there's just too much in East Europe to risk that, it would all go away. Uh, Yugoslavia, Finland, you don't want to lose these things, so the U.S. really does not want to play that card. Unfortunately, the other card that they did send into space, had they played that this turn, would have lost them the game. It would have uh, caused a DEFCON loss. So they've got to be really careful. Everybody's got to be careful when DEFCON gets that low. Um, what this did, though, is also it gave the Russians an extra point, and they tossed that into Algeria. Not really sure what to do with points at this point. And it goes off. <coughs> and... Uh, the U.S. loses their point. We push the turn marker forward, and now the late deck gets mixed in with this deck, and we're really towards the end of the game here. And I'm going to leave this kind of face up, hopefully remembering that the Russians know the Americans have that. Other than that, we're pretty much ready to go.